Welcome to Take 5. Here is your host, Dr. Driver. Welcome to Take 5. I'm your host, Dr. Driver. Oh, thank you, my friends, for listening and watching us. I just want to th say thank you. I, I get very uh, excited when I get the news report from our team on how many people are following and listening to our ministry here. Uh, I, I just say thank you. May the Lord bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, please hit subscribe and notification if you're watching us on YouTube. If you're watching us on Galilee TV, G-A-L-A-L-E-E -E TV, um, you can download that on Roco and Apple Store and uh, Google Store, I guess. Uh, their app, GTV, Classic Television, and we have a video on demand um, opportunity so for you to watch Sharing the Word and Take 5. Thank you again. We are still on Luke 21. And in our last episode, I was talking about the signs in heaven and the earth below and rumors of war and partisanship and um, pestilence and earthquakes and famines. And I explained that there are going, there are signs that are going to make people go, what's going on in the world? You can call it global warming. You, you make any excuse you want. But I always say this. If you want to call what we're going through, like the heat wave, due to global warming, that we have heat waves all through our history, okay? It's not just about fossil fuels contributing to it. The signs of heaven, okay? If there's a meteor shower that hits the planet and causes destruction, don't tell me it's because of global warming. Common sense, people. I'm making a point here. The signs of earthquakes, that's not a sign because of global warming. I'm not into this activism that kind of gets people into all these so-called, you know, uh, man theories of what's happening. I'm a Bible theorist. And I'm here to tell you, the Bible says in the last days, there will be wars, rumors of wars, famine, pestilence, and earthquakes. But the end is not yet. The end is not yet. Because the Lord wants people to repent. And as he gave Pharaoh the opportunity in the Old Testament with Moses, God sent so many plagues over on Egypt, but spared Goshen. Noah had over 100 years to preach the gospel, if you want to say the gospel, but the word of God for 100 years before God put them in the ark, closed the door and said, see you later, everybody, I'm destroying the earth. He also removed Lot and his family with two angels and took them to a higher place meaning getting out of the area, but don't look back, don't look back. And one does, the wife. And he spared them for God's judgment came upon, God's judgment came upon Sodom and Gomorrah. God's judgment is coming upon the world. And only those who are sealed with the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit in them are going to be spared from the wrath to come. So as I preach the word of God, I always ask people, I tell you, I invite you, please just confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. Yes, and he was born of a virgin. You will be saved if you believe that. Just ask the Lord Jesus to come into your life. There's no, you know, uh, blueprint script kind of thing I can give you. The word of God tells you all you got to do is cry out to the Lord and you'll be saved. Believe that Jesus Christ, listen to me, the only key here, believe Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God. Born of a virgin, came into the world, got in the flesh, died on the cross, rose from the dead, and is coming back again. If you believe that, welcome to the family of God. My friends, it's getting so close. I, like I said, I've been preaching for a while. I've been preaching for a while. And I can't tell you what it feels like... Um, well, I can't tell you what I feel like today, but when I look back in my 80s and 90s and early on, I'm like, I felt it, but man, it's stronger today. And I'm hearing a lot of preachers saying the same thing. So if you believe the Lord Jesus is, is imminent, he's on his way here to call the church home, thank you. Welcome to the family of God if you prayed that prayer. So let's now look at what Jesus says, uh, looking at Luke 21. He says in verse 12, he says, but before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake, but it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. 
Therefore, settle in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your hearers will hate. Oh, my friends, what are you saying? This, this happens. I only got about a minute left. I have been in my life, I'm just going to give you an example, because I read the word. I had to defend who I am in Christ. And there were things that were coming out in my life. I was in the military as well when all this stuff was happening. Even in the military and outside of the military, I would be confronted. Even going for or my ordination, I'm, I'm sitting in front of a panel. I, I don't have a, a memorized script. They would say, hey, tell us about what your life is through sanctification. If I didn't know the word of God, it couldn't come out. The Holy Spirit speaks for you. The Holy Spirit prays for you. Romans 8. My friends, do not worry when you are standing before any ruler. Even if Congress called you in, subpoenaed you, and had you come into for whatever session they have for you. Don't worry about what you're going to say. Don't practice. Don't meditate. There's so many people go, oh, I'm going to say this because they're going to say that. I'm going to do this and they're going to say it. Don't do that. Trust the Holy Ghost. Listen to me. Trust the Holy Spirit to speak through you. If you trust in the Lord, he'll get you through it. Paul explained that just in the book of Acts. Standing before, you know, King Agrippa and Bernice, he just spoke. Now, your testimony can lead these people to Christ. Amen? Your testimony can lead people to Christ. Revelation says the same thing. You're saved by the testimony and blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. So never practice what you think they're going to say. You're depending on your own abilities and depending on man. But let the Holy Ghost speak through you. Oh, when I prepare for my sermons, I say, Lord, I got my notes. <laughs> I studied, but speak through me. And he does. So my friends, thank you for listening. We're going to continue uh, on another episode of Luke uh, 21 on this uh, program called Take 5. May God bless you. See you again next time.